Well, this is the start of the trip. It's 8.15. I'm about 15 minutes later than I thought I would be, but I remembered I should bring a chair just in case. And I have a folding chair. Calculating route. Keep left at the fork. Anyway, um, as you can see, it's cloudy. It's not snowing. And as far as I know, it's not going to be snowing all the way south. So just pray that everything will turn out. And as you can see, there's a lot of blowing snow. It's not causing any problems right now, but as cars go over this, <coughs> it starts to pack down into an ice. This is what scares me about driving in Montana or out west, period, in the winter, is this type of weather. This is a southerly wind and it must be about 30 miles an hour. And as you can see, it makes driving interesting, to say the least. Now the temperature's down to 17 degrees, and that's Fahrenheit, and uh, I'm just coming up to where I turn south um, toward Ashton, Idaho. Uh, this is uh, right Idaho turn, right now. Two. Miles. And so in about two miles, I'm going to turn. <laughs> Road's a lot better. The wind is still up. And uh, it's pushing the car. I just wanted to test to see. Well, there is a little bit of sunshine up ahead. You can see it right there. And uh, the roads are cleared up. Uh, still little patches of ice, as you can see right there. But at least the snow is not blowing across the road right now. All right, this icy area stopped. It's there that blowing snow comes across the road, and uh, it gets pressed down by the vehicles as they pass over the uh, blowing snow, and eventually it just becomes really icy. Now, over there, you can barely see them, is the uh, Teton Mountains. Now, that's Wyoming over there. through a uh, lava flow field and uh, just entered into it now. All this is lava rock right around here. You can see it. Uh, it's just uh, an amazing section of Idaho. You can actually see in the distance uh, volcanic cones. Uh, this state was very volcanic. Uh, all right, it's a little after seven o'clock in the morning, and that's Mount Tempanocus right there, which is in the center of the the uh, camera here. And uh, there's a old Indian uh, tale about uh, that mountain and a couple of lovers that. Uh, threw themselves off and the uh, Great Spirit placed this, the body of the female uh, down and that's what makes up uh, the mountain and if you look at it at a right angle it looks like a woman laying down. Anyway, uh, <coughs> heading up uh, towards the Donis Bronze from the hotel. I'm going to try to get everything done today and get back to Montana today before the weather starts socking in. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. I'm trying to get out of here before that happens, and I'm hoping it doesn't snow today. But uh, anyway, I'll pick this up. Well, I'm in the magic room. That's what I call it because of all these wonderful sculptures from just great pieces. There's a boxer back there behind the uh, scaffold, and uh, and then there's a mountain man there, and uh, a Christ there or something that looks like Christ. You got sculptures back there. Just a great room. I've always loved this room and I love that painting right there. That's behind me I, when I worked on the uh, two life-size Indian pieces. But uh, just some great sculptures uh, by great artists. I love that one. Of the pregnant woman up there. Here's some more stuff. And uh, Obviously something that they were working on last night. They had a model in here last night and uh, More stuff over here 
just tons of stuff. Sculptures and just great pieces of work and art. Kind of humbles me because uh, these guys are so much better than I am. You see, this is a ship is stuck up in a tree. It's just a real storybook type thing. Whimsical. Just an incredible boxing piece back there. In clay. Looks like uh, FDR's wife back there. Not certain if that's who it is, but it looks like. busy down there. Galleries, things get screwed up. Oh, crap. Well, almost everything. It's really hard to do. I made this uh, shield, remember, a couple of days ago, and uh, I'm uh, going to attach that on here. The uh, hand underneath there was pretty well battered up. That's no big problem because uh, I can fix that. a little side uh, story. I just wanted to show you something that uh, they do here at Adonis Bronze. They can uh, point up a thing to uh, as big as you want and cut it out of foam using this uh, computer guided machine which the table is going back and forth and, and the uh, drill bit is being guided by that uh, wild looking thing right there. And uh, this gentleman over here is the one that's controlling it. What's your name? Luke? How you doing, Luke? But anyway, I just thought you'd like to see that.
as you can see that's going to be uh, how big is this piece going to be 10 feet tall this is just part of it and that's the foot that uh, this machine is now cutting out let me bring the camera over here it's just crazy So that's the scanner right there for the uh, big machine we just saw in the other room. It's a what? It's a 3D laser scanner. Wow. It's got three cameras to uh, reference both the, the positioning sensors on yeah. the piece that you put on and you got little stickers. So it gets uh, depth and all that stuff. Depth from three different angles plus then it emits a laser that you paint the surface and you, you collect information and it triangulates between wow. all three cameras. So it's a completely portable setup, and we can pack it up, take it out. Um, a couple of months ago, we flew out to Hawaii and scanned a bunch of clays that they didn't, they didn't want to necessarily ship. This is the boss of all this stuff. What is your name? My name's Andrew. I'm huh? Andrew Stredbeck. I'm Gary's son. Yeah. So oh, I'm okay. The, I'm the owner's son. And, uh, so you could life. actually take the clay that I'm working on and scan it in? Yes. Wow. Fringe. Fringe yep. is terribly hard, partly because there's such a thin... The scanner is a direct line of sight You have to do scanner. a separate part for just that one part. Well, you can't get in and around and in between all the cracks. You can't... It's hard to... Oh, get, I see what you mean. It's hard to get it to generate enough surface. But see, that's where the sculptor coming in and working on it would... Well, it has to be redone, yeah. no matter which size you make it. But then thin round things are also, you can't machine them. Well, you just do it. You that's that's what the sculptor would do, yeah. Yeah. But feathers are hard just because they, everything ends up, anything thin ends up so delicate that bit is spinning at uh, 15,000 RPM. Wow. And it just tears those. We do the best we could, obviously, but uh, won't get everything. Yeah. See, he's just explaining uh, the things that. Uh, goes into scanning a, a uh, sculpture. Well, you do it and machine plastic. it. You'd 3D print, okay. which is, think like a hot glue gun, layer by layer of material. So it lays down a layer and then steps up and lays down another layer. Isn't that wild? They've got them that'll print uh, hair, hair thicknesses of materials. Wow. And uh, so they tell that's, it to print crazy. over the weekend and it'll print your model. And they've got some size limitations, so depending on, on what size you want it, you have to maybe print it in a couple pieces. Yeah. Or, on top of that, you also keep in mind the bronzing process. If you need an arm off to make your molds, you do that digitally and print them all separately. Oh, I so see. you print all your dividing lines, you can print a lot of your different things, then you would print it one time with all your pore system on it, and then burn it out and yeah cast from a small resin. Well, I better get back to work on this guy because i got to leave here by noon. Okay. How you doing? This man work. Hey, man. All right, I'm just south of Pocatello, Idaho, and I'm coming into the uh, lava fields, or lava flow fields. This is That cliff right up ahead is, is all old lava flow. Anyway, just uh, wanted to fill you in what was going on. I, I'm getting a bronze of mine, I mean a clay of mine cast in the bronze that's been sitting in clay for several years now. And uh, I did the, uh, added a dog to it. And uh, it's uh, going to be cast in the bronze finally. I worked out a deal with the uh, gallery in, in Park City and uh, it's going to be nice to have that cast. They're casting, of course, uh, Touch the Clouds in bronze. And both of them probably will be done next month. So it was a good deal. I didn't video a lot of what I did because it was just too much to try to rush and get that thing done and try to think of camera angles and all that stuff. So that's the reason why you didn't get much video of me working on the clay, which was boring anyway because it was just little tiny things I was doing to it to tweak it and 
get it ready. All right. Well, started out the morning with sunrise. Now I'm at sunset. I still got about an hour and a half before I get home. Uh, I'm going to be glad to get home. Anyway, I'm just up here above Ashton and up at about 6,000 feet. And thank God there's no snow. I was so worried about that. It called for snow. And uh, I'm just so glad I missed it. Uh, now I just hope and pray the road isn't frozen. Because it's 27 degrees right now. And if there's any kind of ice on the road at all, it's, it's uh, going to be up here. All right. Just an update. <laughs> Good night.